put out lovely welcome. And thank you for the wonderful food for the food. <laughs> I'm not actually vegan, I'm a uh, flexitarian. Uh, I, I have a lot of I have a lot of friends uh, who are vegan and I live with them, so I uh, really like a lot of vegan dishes. Uh, and they really don't like it when you call yourself flexitarian, but uh, <laughs> My family's quite ambivalent about, uh, I have a, a pretty traditional family and they go out and they hunt. So they're, uh, I'm one of the characters. Uh, I split some of the trickster into two parts because uh, it's just a massive brick. Uh, and in the second part, uh, I have a vegan extreme athlete who invented Venican, which is vegan Venican. And uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, my friends who are Cree have asked me to change his nation because uh, there are no Cree vegans. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure there is, you know, somewhere there is a Cree vegan. Uh, and if not, you know, I can change it to Haida or something. You know, there's a lot of Haida vegans. So this, is, so I'm reading a, a short. Uh, piece from Center of the Trickster. And uh, the background is, uh, in, in Kinema, our trickster is vegan. But my mother has asked me to represent my Helsic half more uh, aggressively. He, that's her big complaint about my books. Uh, I don't have enough of her culture and her language uh, and her traditions and not, not enough Helsic representation. So uh, one of the other novels I'm working on is a trashy band council romance. Oh, so yes. I said, if you, if you like, I can set that in Bella Bella. And she was like, no, you can leave that one again. <laughs> uh, so I need Jared Heltzik. Uh, and his father is obviously the first one we get. He knocked up his mother at the all native basketball tournament in Prince Rupert. Uh, Interlude. If you ever pour a little Elmer's glue onto your hand, spread it around, wait for it to dry, then peel it off. Once it dries, the glue is a clear imprint of the lines of your palms. Imagine our universe is the dry glue. All the beings on earth and in the sky, all the endless blackness of space, all the heavens in their great spinning chaos, everything you know exists in this thin copy of a completely different layer of reality. Our universe is a brain, a hologram, a soap bubble. We don't go through the looking glass, we are the looking glass. Some cultures imagine our world on the back of a turtle, which you would think is not literal. But our universe rides a creature so strange, we don't have the senses to detect it or the map to explain it. Maybe we did live in a layer of mud on the back of a giant multi-dimensional turtle. Consider the dark star at the center of our galaxy, our Kali, our Odin eating wolf at the end of days. This massive black hole shapes our galaxy into a made pole of stars pinwheeling around its gravity well. As we approach this cosmic Charybdis, Consider the violence necessary to shred the matter of suns into the glowing screen of its whirling accretion disk, while in the heart of the black hole, its gravitational meat grinder forces space and time into a grisly singularity. This is your door, not only in time, but in dimensions. Consider roadkill. Consider the bloody pancake of the body, now a shadow on the road. Your three-dimensional body made two-dimensional by the mass and velocity of cars. Now consider your three-dimensional body in nine dimensions. Imagine pouring a glass of apple juice into the ocean. When you shift out of our dimensions, you run the risk of dispersion so profound even the memory of you is obliterated. Universes are stubbornly separate, unless you are a trickster. Okay, uh, I'm going to start in uh, part three where Jared arrives in Vancouver uh, because part one and two are very salty and full of weird sex. <laughs> so.
there's there's no my bloods, but uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Near noon, with the sun boiling in the center of the sky, the Greyhound bus circled around behind the Vancouver terminal and then sighed into its bay. Jared scanned the people for a familiar face, pausing at the short-haired woman holding a bunch of bobbing helium limbs. She was tanned a deep brown. She wore a bright blue dress and shiny brown heels. Her neck dripped with turquoise beads. She stood on her tiptoes as the as door opened. That can't be Aunt Mavis, he thought. The line edged forward as people pulled their luggage down and trudged out. A slug of hot, humid air crawled into the bus. The woman scanned the bus, then the door, bus door. Jared craned his neck to see if anyone else was waiting. Jared, she shouted as he came down the steps. Jared, over here! Aunt Mavis? She clutched him. The balloons formed a wobbly cloud over their head as she burst into tears, saying his name over and over. Strangers smirked as they walked past or gave them a light birth. The driver started unloading the luggage. She grabbed the sides of his head and stared at him, her forehead bumping against his baseball cap. I knew you the second I saw you. I didn't know you anywhere. Did you know it was me? Um, yeah. She looked up and loosened the knot of her hands. Give me a rest. There's my daffle. I've got a one balloon for each birthday I miss, she said. He started crying again and not wanting to make a bigger scene. He let her slip the balloons around his hand, feeling a furious blush start. The driver paused as he was unloading to stare at Jared's balloons. He grinned. Jared grabbed his daffle and slung it over his free arm. Maybe linked her arm in his. Are you hungry? No, no. I, I mean, I'm good, thanks. It's a long ride, isn't it? Do you want to go get some groceries or go straight home? Um, home? I can drive you up to BCIG tomorrow if you'd like to look around before your classes start. You don't have to. Don't you want to get oriented? Or do you want to sleep in? The balloons banged around the door frame as they entered the station and Jared needed to take a piss. I'm just tired right now. She left. I'm sorry, I'm just excited. Beginnings are all about possibilities, aren't they? Yeah, he said, although in his experience, things that usually started good ended when he let home stuff slip. Then there was an uncomfortable silence that the kids about, you might be more comfortable elsewhere, or I think being your friend is a parole violation. In the parking lot, she popped the trunk of a cherry red boat second beetle with black polka dots and two black glittery wings on the roof. The headlights had black pupils pointed on, painted on them, and were surrounded with long black lashes. Okay, Jared said. I wanted an Orca or a Darth Vader helmet, Maeve said, popping the trunk, but justice was all for normal. Ha, ah, Jared said haplessly, trying to figure out how he was going to get his duffel in the trunk, which was crammed with banker boxes, stacks of books, grocery bags, joint cleaning, and a hamster cage. Maybe we should put this in the back seat. Oh, it'll fit, she said, grabbing it and smooshing it over the groceries. They stood around with the car doors open, waiting to let the interior cool down and then stuff the balloons in the back seat. He took them to his backpack. Aunt Nate smiled at him. Jared smiled back and then felt stupid, and then felt bad about feeling stupid. He wished she'd stop staring at him. He sat and pulled the door closed, drew the seatbelt down, relieved to be looking at something other than his aunt, who slid in the driver's seat. She opened the windows. I have a fantastic phone plan, Nate said. She turned to him, putting a hand on his arm. I bundled it with my cell service and internet. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> okay. She rummaged around her purse. So if you don't want to phone anyone, anytime, you can. I'm good. Her cell phone was in a bright white right case. She waggled it. I bet your mom wants to know you're safe. I, that's okay. Are you going to phone her? Because if she's waiting to hear from you and she doesn't, she might freak. She won't freak. I freak. Jared tried to think of an answer that would make him sleeping on a park bench. Is she still mad? Maybe said Jared tried. She's still mad, isn't she? You know what she's like. She couldn't blame him, could she? She had to blame us. It's never his fault that Canadian bugger. Has he turned out yet? Who? Your father. 
Yeah, he was at the A and W in Paris to say goodbye. We get it. Was in the A and W in Paris? Who? No, Dad's name is Phil. Not Frank and Phil. Your real dad. We get it. the sperm donor, not the Phil. I think you're mixing my dad up with someone else. My dad was. We get it. They said the trickster, the transforming maven. He knocked your mom off because he knew she knew she can't keep a secret to save her life. Jared realized then that Aunt Davis wasn't messing around. She was, in fact, that's the Belfry crazy. He smiled and nodded, relaxing like he just slipped out of church clothes and back into a stained, saggy pair of sweatpants. Okay, and this is a little bit later. <laughs> They turned left on a yellow light, which flipped red halfway through the intersection. Jerry lost what his aunt was saying, seeing in slow motion the oncoming black truck. It honked. Maeve airily waved and sped up, honking and turned at the car ahead of her. Light reflected off the buildings, and despite the open windows, Jerry could feel the sweat drip down his armpits and his back, could feel the grunge of his unwashed denim with his jeans. The balloons bubbled in the back seat like excited kids. Diagnostic medical sonography. Maeve said the word slowly as if they had a taste. She wasn't sure she liked it. Thank you. <laughs> so you're upgrading to get into this technical program. That sounds. Is it your passion? A what? Jared loosened his death grip on the seatbelt in the door. Is it your dream? I don't understand. You're going to be spending a lot of days looking at people's innards. Sick, grumpy people. This would better be something you love. We'll pay the bills. I'm just saying, before you commit a whole bunch of time and energy to something that isn't going to make you happy, maybe you should have a little rethink, Joey. Jared thought that McVeigh had died with his parents' marriage. Maybe your park bench would be so bad. What does your mom think, they have said. She's all, you know, mom. I'm just saying you have your whole life ahead of you. No judgment, just love. I'm concerned. Jared wanted out of the love bug. All he wanted to do was sleep. I was going to make something, but it's too hot at me, so let's do a drive through What do you feel like having? Burgers, wraps, fried chicken? I'm okay. My blood sugar is so low, I think I'm a road hazard. This will just take a sec. Um, is this a legal term? Oh, it's Vancouver, she said. Don't think of her a concrete dividing curve. The love bugs undercarriage growing like a dying foghorn. They change the rules all the time. Who can follow them? God, I hope you have a decent skip plate. Jared, relax. Maeve cut off a banged up older model, Toyota Corolla, as she pulled into the drive through lane. The Corolla hopped. Jerry poked his head out the window to see if they'd left anything behind. The curb was crossed with layers of smears, but none of them looked shiny and new, which was helpful. You might want to check your universal joints and, and your oil pan. What a little worried word you are. Bugs aren't built to 4 by 4 Aunt Maeve. Oh, you should see the potholes we've survived. Maeve Rudge stood her purse and pulled out her wallet. You had a chance to make your life what you want it to be. Open your mind to the possibilities. Can we drop this? I'll drop the school talk if you drop the snarky remarks about my driving. Fine, Jared said. Aunt Maeve rolled down her window and studied the menu board as if it held a secret treasure map. Jared ruled himself to unclench. Welcome to Tim Hortons. A young woman's voice droned over the intercom. How can I help you? I don't think you understand your potential. I didn't catch that, ma'am. Are you ordering poutine? Potential! Maybe I'll into the intercom. The possibility contained with your the possibility contained within your abilities before full realization. Good, because we don't make poutine here. How did you decide what you wanted to do with your life, if you don't mind me asking? A car honked in the line. A car honked in the line of cars growing behind them. A man yelled, order already! And Jared appeared in the slide mirror. The young man in the black SUV was sunburned. He laid on his horn again to its side. Trust his luck to finally make it to Vancouver and get shot within an hour of arriving because he was between some horn honker and his camping fix. 
I hated retail, the woman was saying. This was close to my apartment and I don't have to do the night shift. It's kind of boring, but I like being home when my kids are home. Order a coffee like a normal person. He's going to shoot us if he don't order in. Some people, and I said, Pis pisking. Amen. The woman said, I miss real winters. I'd move home if there were any jobs there. Where's home? Just a sec, honey. The woman said, honk. What the hell is wrong with you? Honk. Another voice chimed in. Some of us have wives, you know. The intercom crackled. Uh-oh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, my manager is going to give you a free coffee if you get out of line. <laughs> what a sweetie. Do you want anything, Jelly Bean? No, nothing. I'm good. Don't worry. Okay. We, we should move. Are you too shy to ask for what you want? He sounds shy, the woman said. Uh, 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 uh. A grilled cheese committee. Jared said, okay, can we go? Oh, that sounds fine. I'll have one of those too. My boy loves it with ham. That sounds better, May said. One regular and one on multigrain. Jared decided he'd stay with her until his friend Deathlet texted him back. Hopefully, Death was back to dealing wheelchair weed. Jared would check out some new shelter just to be on the safe side. His ex-girlfriend Sarah, he'd say for the apocalypse. Thanks for the food, Jared said. I worry too, and I said. Jared sighed. They pulled up to the takeout window, and a pale blonde woman with black rings of eyeliner leaned over and smiled at me. Sorry if I got you in trouble that night, so. Not a problem. He's a regular. His wife left him for his business partner, and he's pretty cheesed with the world. Hey, I was ordered to my bill, okay? Tell him I understand heartbreak. You've all been there, honey. They laughed while they chatted Jerry checked the mirror, and the line of cars seemed happier that they were at least moving. The blonde woman had to make a takeout bag. They turned back on the commercial drive. If you could be absolutely anything, that May said, what would it be? Jared wanted to bang his head against the dashboard. She wasn't going to let it go. God, she was just like his mom. Fine. I've always dreamed of being an ultrasound guy. It's possibly the most awesome job in the world. <laughs> really? Yes, it's like being Batman. <laughs> I don't think you're being entirely sincere, Mr. Snarky. At least she was off the jelly bean thing. People come in and something's wrong, but they don't know. They want answers. I help them get answers. You want to help people? Yes. You're not just saying that to get me off your back. No. Huh. Actually, he read an article about the hottest jobs and then picked one that didn't sound like it would take 20 years of post-secondary or apprenticeships. He phoned through the guidance counselor, a sunburnt younger man with scraggly shoulder length hair who wore the lion shirts under his blazer. Jar Jar, the dude said, just take heavy equipment. I could get you into the next session and you'd be set. Not my thing, Jared said. Due to type something into his laptop and squinted at the results. Yeah. Can I have Sir Oilers, ma'am? What? Your choices for local schools to teach medical sonography. The British Columbia Institute of Technology in Vancouver or the Northern Alberta Institute of Technology in Edmonton. Yeah, which looks like it mostly teaches ultrasound for programs. What about funding? Are you scouts? Man, play your red card. Lots of people on the list, not a lot of money. Due to truck. Thing is, you'll probably pass and graduate, but it's ugly. You need to get your bio grades up. Mere physics marks talk about speakers, dude. Not a lot of spots in these programs. Lots of people wanting in. Muchos competitores. But if I upgrade it, got my grades up. You totally get funded for heavy equipment. Bam, you get hired the second you graduate. Good money, man, ka-ching. Jared's dad had worked at Urican for 15 years, and that had been good money. They all knew the pulp and paper mill was closing for months before, but it didn't make it any easier for the 535 people laid off. His dad had sat at the dinner table drinking year after year, staring at his walking papers. Jared could still feel the unease of those first weeks when his dad pulled up in his bedroom and the steady flow of new falls emptying their street. 
companies eat you until they yell at you thought, but people never stop breaking down. Thank you. Do you guys want to do like questions or do you just want to mingle? <laughs> mingle it as well? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can let some of us know about your background or literary or inspiration or literature. Okay. Uh, my background, literary or uh, anything, uh, I'm Let's see, Highland Health, I kind of did a, a bachelor's and then a master's in creative writing at UVic and at UBC. Um, I've been, let's see, uh, pretty quiet literary wise for the last couple of years. I've been uh, working on uh, with uh, uh, various groups on uh, um, protesting Enbridge. Uh, and uh, then taking a break from that to get back to writing. So this is, um, uh, this book came uh, out of a series of workshops that I did with high school students. And uh, the, one of the high schools that I visited was the Bella Bella Community High School. And we did a couple of character exercises. And uh, we built characters together. And uh, the characters that they built were a lot of fun. And uh, uh, so one of the one of the characters that they created uh, just kind of lived in there for a while. And uh, then I got a lot of um, uh, I don't know if anyone knows Richard Van Camp. Heard of him? Uh, yeah, he's a uh, uh, Lester Blast, Angels, Splashing Patterns. Uh, oh, he was just here. Oh, Oh, he's such a sweetheart. Well, we did uh, an Aboriginal storytelling festival together in Prince George, and he told a story about uh, the seven Otter Sisters uh, at the at the All Native Basketball Tournament, and um, that was <laughs> it was it was hilarious. And the, all uh, my muse works by planet accretion. Uh, when I get enough ideas together, they start to collapse into a novel, and they, when they start spinning. Um, and so that's how this one worked. I got enough ideas together, and then they started spinning. Uh, so it's uh, in the first draft right now, and we're just talking to editors. So I'm not quite sure who's going to publish it yet. Your um, character made us. Mm -hmm. Is she somebody that you know in your life, or uh, well, the, her, her driving? <laughs> well, her driving skills are based on mine. <laughs> uh, and my niece and nephew will tell you that I really uh, uh, don't understand team boundaries. So. <laughs> She's a lot of, uh, she's influenced by a lot of different people. And uh, I just really wanted to have a, a really goofy writer character in there. Uh, and she's a, lot of, she's a lot of fun to write. Um, uh, she's, uh, she's involved with uh, a lot of different groups. And one of them is the Sartorial Resistance, uh, which does uh, fashion shoots slash uh, uh, protest blockades. <laughs> that there weren't uh, 
enough Sasquatches in it? Oh, oh, uh, my dad got so excited when I told him that I was writing a book called Monkey Baby because he loves Sasquatches. Uh, so, um, mom's reaction to Monkey Beach was, why aren't there more Halsa characters? And dad's reaction was, it, you know, it would have sold better if he had more Sasquatches. <laughs> uh, he absolutely loves Sasquatches. Uh, his theory about why we don't see Sasquatches anymore is because they've built a mall. Uh, and they're too busy shopping. I thought they were at Bingo. Uh, you know, and you know, they, they've also, um, they have Squatch Book. So that's why the, why the, you know, finding big for people will never find them. Because, you know, when scientists or researchers come into their territory or, you know, Sasquatch hunters, they post on the Squatch Book. Uh, where the, Yeah, like we Thank you all for coming out.